Yo, what is up? Joshua Casper here with an Ableton Basics tutorial. Um, this was a question from someone over on the community in Facebook, and um, I kind of can't believe I haven't already done some tutorial like this, but uh, this is for exporting your song to get it to your buddies. Um, I've done so many things around this topic, but I've never actually just done it. Uh, exported the mix down, just ready to go, I don't think. I might have. I have too many videos to remember at this point. But what I'm going to do is just kind of show you, if you're going to try to get it perfectly sectioned off, um, some things to go about doing. So I've let's just say that this is my mastering um, version of this project. Um, my master will look a little different, but I just wanted to use this kind of quickly to get the video done. Um, uh, what I've done is frozen these MIDI tracks, and when you freeze the MIDI track, um, it shows you how far off the sound carries after the initial MIDI input. So for this one, which is the longest um, one, the reverb and the delay carry this sound to about here, where this checkered line stops. So there is sound happening here, outside of the actual MIDI note. And you can hear that. And sometimes you'll have a send and return track, and you can't actually freeze these. So I'm going to show you a way to go about um, just quickly seeing how far off your track goes um, past the end of the audio uh, clips here. So. Um, Another thing you need to do is select all, and you can do that by selecting with your cursor or using control A, and I bring it over to about uh, the fifth bar, and you don't have to bring it to the fifth bar, but I just do that because I like to see the checkered boxes here and everything sectioned off real nice, and you want to bring over your play cursor, and you want to leave a little bit of dead space in front of the first drop here because sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes when you export it will kind of clip a very little bit of that beginning and, and no one likes that. Um, so what I do is just pull it over a little bit. And you can't even hear that there is a space there but it's going to help with um, your export, especially you, you know if you're trying to get this to a professional company for whatever. But um, So you can do it even this much. Like when I press play, you can't hear any dead space. It's not obvious. So uh, it's just good to be safe so you don't get any audio clipping in the end there. And the next thing we need to do is figure out how far off the audio tapers. And the way we can do that is we can either listen and we can look at the, the, the little coloration coming up on this master channel here. But that is deceptive because it doesn't always get the absolute end of the audio. Um, it's not perfect here and your ear, uh, you know, despite what you may think, is not perfect. So the way I would suggest going about doing that is creating a new audio channel. And we can pull it down. It doesn't need to be at the top there. I like it at the bottom. And um, we go ahead and arm this to record and we come in from the master. And what I'm going to do is, this isn't an entire track, but it's just to show you um, for an example. It's just this. Um, eight bar loop that I made in the last tutorial and if you want to learn how to make this nice little song or loop you can go ahead and click those links on the blog but anyway um, arm the track in from the master and hit record And it's important that even though it sounds like it's done now, just to keep it, just to let it go. There's no reason to stop it. Just let that recording go. And then we go ahead and pause it. And I mean, I'm pretty sure all the audio is gone here. Uh, hopefully it is so we don't have to redo this. But then the next thing we can do is come into the track itself and pull this gain up all the way. And you don't want to play that now. Obviously, it'll be super loud and distorted. But we want to solo this and then we can hear um, it... I don't know, accentuated down here at this part to see where the audio actually stops. So you could see right there that there was still a little bit of audio going on. So 
So because we're not using the sends and, master, uh, sends and returns in this track, in fact, where the audio actually stops is where Ableton has showed us because we have this frozen track. But if we were using a send and return, this would be more useful. And I apologize, I didn't um, think this video through enough, but whatever, that's the way it's done. So what I would do then is pull over my selector here to the end of where that happens. And again, leave a little space. It can't hurt to leave that little tiny space. No one's going to notice. We can go ahead and delete that track now. Um, I guess that we just did that to make sure this was, in fact, where it ended. Um, and like I said, if you're using a send a return, it would be a little different. So now that that's done, what we would do is select this. Just make sure that bar is selected, which means everything inside of these, uh, in, inside of this bar right here is going to be exported. And then we come over to the master, make sure it's on zero, make sure your mastering chain is all set to go, and then come to file, export audio video, and we're going to render the track master, which is exactly what we want to do. Uh, don't normalize, don't render as a loop, don't convert to mono. Um, I never turn those on, obviously you can, but I, I don't suggest it. You should not need to normalize because you should be, you should be using some professional grade uh, mastering compression, utilities, and stuff like that. So that should do the normalization for you, not this kind of automatic uh, program. I'm not even sure what they're using to normalize. But uh, render as a loop, we don't need to do that because this isn't a loop. We're pretending this is a song right here. And uh, convert to mono, obviously, we want um, the stereo dynamics um, for our track that we're going to send to our buddies. The audio file type. You could use either of these. I like to use Wave. The sample rate 44.1 is the industry standard right now. This is probably going to change in the, you know 2015, so you can have to re-upgrade your already upgraded Bport library from 16-bit Wave to 24-bit Wave. Um, so choose the 16 option because that's the industry standard right now. We want to turn dithering on. I use the POWR3. Um, you can do those. You can. Uh, you know, export them with them all and see if you can hear the difference. Uh, this is the one I usually use. I'm going to leave a link on the blog for a great video describing dithering and actually showing you what it's doing uh, visually. Super great video. We don't need to create an analysis file. The video options are um, not applicable here because we're not exporting video. And I don't want to upload to SoundCloud right now because I'm going to use iTunes to make this into an MP3. So I'm going to just hit OK. And this is great. This title. And I'm going to hit Save to the Desktop. It says it already exists because I already did this tutorial and messed up. So I'm going to hit Replace. Yes. Boom. OK. So now that that's exported, I'm going to come over here. And here it is. And if we play that, rest assured, it will be fine. So what I'm going to do here is come into iTunes and come over here and drop this web inside of iTunes. And iTunes is a great function where if I, this is a wave and if I right click, I can say create MP3 version. Now, it doesn't come stock um, 320 kilobytes, which is what we want. So what we have to do is come into preferences. And I did a separate video tutorial on this before, but we might as well just knock it all out right now. Come to General, Import Settings, and I come down to uh, Setting. We want MP3, but obviously you can change it to whatever you want, but MP3 is pretty much the standard. Setting, Custom, which opens up another menu, and we want the bit rate, obviously, as high as we can go. Sample rate, 44.1, because that's already what it is, and that's the industry standard. Sa uh, stereo Channel. Uh, stereo mode normal is fine, and uh, we'll just leave all these as is and hit OK, hit OK, hit OK, and then come right click, create MP3 version, converts it, and boom, now we have our 30 second clip of the track that we just exported. And uh, just to make sure. That's the sound, and now we can go ahead and upload that to wherever we want, or email it, or whatever you want to do. But anyway, I know that's pretty basic stuff, but some people don't know. We take it for granted sometimes, the stuff that we do know that's second nature. We forget that some people are just getting started, and they don't know that stuff yet. So anyway, I hope that helped some of you, and for the advanced people, I apologize for going back, but um, we will get into some crazy, crazy shh 
in uh, 2014. Anyway, subscribe, rate, comment, and we'll see you next time. Peace.